thank you, Chair, for my introduction. And the title of my presentation is the Biomass and Plastic Waste as Fuels for Electrolysis and Fuel Cells. At first, I'd like to make an introduction of our group's work. Our group is focusing on the electrochemical devices. Uh, ionic conducting materials are used in many electrochemical devices such as fuel cells and batteries and membrane reactors, gas sensors and capacitors. In these devices, the Electrochemical charges are transported in the form of ions. For example, of the lithium ion batteries, the lithium ions migrate through the electrolyte. If we classify these the devices by the operating temperatures, we can find the blank of the devices between 200 and 400 degrees. This results from the lack of the, the ionic conductors at these temperature range. In these figures, the various ionic conductors, especially with respect to the fuel cells electrolyte, are summarized with respect to the Professor Norby's work. In previous studies, the cesium hydrogen sulfate and the cesium dihydrogen phosphate were reported as proton conducting materials in this temperature range. When we try to use uh, these ionic conductors as fuel cell electrolyte, the required the conductivities are higher than 0.01 Zmass per centimeters. However, these conductivities of these materials are almost at the limit. Therefore, to, to realize electrochemical devices at intermediate temperatures, the, it, it is necessary to design and prepare such materials. We previously reported that 10% indium doped zinc phosphate shows the proton conductivity higher than 0.1 Zmens in unhumidified conditions between 150 degrees and 350 degrees, as shown in this figure. And we have already reported the fuel cells, batteries, gas sensors, reactors, capacitors using this material as the electrolyte. Taking advantage of high temperature operation, we are focusing on the efficient use of biomass as an um, environmental friendly energy materials. Among several biomass, the rice straw and the thin woods are classified as unused biomass, and the amount of them is estimated 300 petajoules in Japan. A part of this biomass is used for the electric power and heat generation. In all techniques, biomass is transformed to the flammable gases through the pyrolysis gasification. Because these gases are not suitable for the transportation, these power plants should be constructed near the place where biomass is produced. The other form of the biomass is known as bioethanol. This picture explains the bioethanol production from UD biomass. Through the multiple steps, the biomass is transformed to ethanol. Therefore, this technique requires time, energy, and cost to get ethanol. The reason why this technique requires multiple steps is that the biomass contains a lignin, which is protecting the cell, cell rows in plant cells. This 
picture explains the structure and the components of plant cells. Green one is cellulose, and blue one is hemicellulose, and orange one is living. Cellulose is composed of beta glucose as a monomer. Because cellulose is composed of a chain of the beta glucose, the cellulose is a good candidate for new energy material. But as you can see, the cellulose is covered with the, the cellulose is covered and protected by hemicellulose and the lignin. So cellulose is difficult to use directly for the for former processes like a catalytic process and chemical process and enzymatic process. So many challenges have been made to convert cellulose to energy. Here I'd like to introduce the related works using biomass for hydrogen production. If we can get ethanol from biomass, the hydrogen can be produced from ethanol following these uh, simple, simple equations, the actions. But as I mentioned, uh, it requires time, energy, and cost to get ethanol from biomass. The other techniques to get the hydrogen from the biomass is direct electrolysis of the, the cellulose and the lignin from the biomass. The action equation of direct cellulose I'm sorry, the deaction equation of the direct electrolysis all is shown in these the equations. Our group reported that the digonocellulosic materials is dissolved in phosphoric acid and can be actualized to hydrogen to hydrogen according to these deaction equations. In these reports, the, we used the platinum carbon catalyst which will increase the cost of the, this technique because the platinum is used. So we have, we have tried to investigate the platinum free catalyst. As a candidate, uh, we focused on the carbons containing carbonyl groups on the surface as shown in this figure. The carbonyl groups will work as an intermediate for the proton conduction between the cellulose and carbon catalyst. Thinking of these challenges, we set the object of research as this, as this. The goal of this research is listed here. First one is developing a method for electrolysis of biomass directly to hydrogen and then determining the best carbon catalyst as an alternative to platinum carbon anode. And the modification of the carbon anode by surface oxygenation. And determining the hydrogen yield. Finally, the demonstrating the continuous hydrogen production. This picture represents the concept of this, this research. Biomass materials were resolved in phosphoric acid, and the solution was introduced to the actual chemical cell. When voltage was applied to this cell by using ultra power source, the protons migrate through the electrolyte, and hydrogens are produced from the other electrodes. To demonstrate this concept, we designed uh, these two electrochemical cells. The, the first one is batch cell, and the other is the flow type cell. For the char characterization, we used LCMS and X-ray diffraction. For the electrochemical measurement, we used the four probe method for the constant current and voltage measurement. And the impedance spectra were collected to evaluate the cell resistance. 
The components of the wheat and wood and paper are shown in this graph. As the example of the wheat, we selected uh, the Miss Kansas Sinensis, which is widely grown wild from the Okinawa to Hokkaido. And we call the Suzuki in Japanese. Yes. Cellulose occupies about 40% and hemicellulose 20% and lignin 50%. In the case of newspapers, the cellulose is a main component to form the paper. The content of the cellulose is higher than those of wheat and wood. These are the results of the electrochemical measurement. Electrolysis performance is shown in this figure. When we use the platinum carbon electrode, the electrolysis started around 0.5 volts and the IV carb slope was improved according to the operating temperatures. The impedance spectra was the, in, was the same, has the same trend. The obtained the hydrogen evolution rate was the compared with the theoretical values calculated from the Faraday's law. The obtained value were almost equal to the theoretical values. I'm showing this figure. These results show the actual chemical performance using lignin as a biomass. IV and impedance performance were was slightly lower than those of cellulose. This will reflect the low reactivity of lignin. So the cellulose is the preferable for the electrolysis. These are the result when the carbon electrode was used instead of platinum carbon electrode. Comparable performance was, uh, could be obtained without platinum catalyst. So next, uh, in order to improve the electrochemical performance of the carbon electrode, the surface of the carbon was modified by immersing the carbon powders into nitric acid. The oxidation of the carbon surface was confirmed by the XPS data. But the surface area was not affected at all. By this acid treatment, the IV performance was improved as shown in this figure. So we can demonstrate the concept of the cellulose electrolysis. So we next used the Miscanthus sinensis as the example of wheat. The leaf of the Miscanthus sinensis was grind into the powders and dissolved in the phosphoric acid. You can see that the leaves are melting according to the temperatures. In addition to the Miscanthus sinensis, the, we compared the other two plants. One is the Seitaka Wadachiso and the other is Kuzu uh, in Japanese. The obtained electrolysis performance were similar to the those of lignin. Uh, were similar to those of lignin. I showed before. Uh, from these results, uh, we can produce a hydrogen from wheat in this electrochemical cell. Next, so in order to confirm that the hydrogen can be produced continuously. So flow cell was used for a long time experiment. 
the cell voltages and the hydrogen production rate were stable uh, during the constant current operation, as shown in these figures. I have told about uh, hydrogen production from the biomass, but if we use the air or oxygen in the cathode chambers, we can produce the electricity. In this case, this is the fuel cells. So we introduced the air to the cell and measure the fuel cell performance using cell rows as a fuel. The open circuit voltage of the fuel cell increased with increasing temperature and the resultant OCB reached around 0.7 at 250 degrees. The obtained power density increased with increasing temperatures and we can obtain about 30 milliwatt per square centimeter when cellulose cell is used as a fuel. As a fuel. In addition to the cellulose as a fuel, so we used actual biomass such as cypress, and plywood, and tissue paper as a fuel. The obtained power density reached to the reached to 25 milliwatt per square centimeters for tissue paper. Because the composition of the cellulose in tissue paper is higher than the others. And finally, in addition to the biomass materials, we also examine the plastics such as the vinyl, nylon, and the poly polyurethane as a hydrogen source. And same as the case of the biomass, these the plastics were dissolved in the phosphoric acid and electrolysis and the fuel cell performances are shown in these figures. The IV performance were lower than those of biomass, but the hydrogen production and the power generation from the plastics was realized using the this electrochemical cells. So this is the summary of my pre today's presentation. And thank you for your attention.